Good morning, youth. Sorry, Morgan was like giving me an awkward uh, signal there that she was recording. So anyway, happy Easter. What a special day. It's uh, quarantine Sunday number four, and you all know what that means. It's Gracie's birthday. So uh, happy birthday, Gracie. You know, make sure to send her a shout out today or call her and wish her a happy birthday. And Gracie, I think I will eat an extra piece of dessert today in your honor. So appreciate you having a birthday. Um, as of now, I guess the speculation is that we will actually be able to maybe meet again uh, in May. Looks like everything is going to be closed through April. And so, you know, it's a fluid situation changing all the time. But maybe we can get back together in May and actually see you all here in the class. Um, for now, make sure that you are doing your devotions, uh, you know, reading God's Word and spending time with the Lord in prayer. And um, I tell you, with all this time on your hands, you're either going to come out of this closer to God or farther away. I certainly hope and pray that it will be closer. So, today's lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, continuing on with where we left off last week. So we're going to uh, do verses 35 through the end of the chapter. So pause for reading. Oh wait, I'm supposed to pause for reading. Okay, are you done? Alright, so Jesus is still talking to his disciples. And if you remember last week, he had told them to watch out for hypocrites and uh, to store up your treasures in heaven, uh, and to not worry about anything because God's in control. So he goes on to say in verse 35 through 39, Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes, Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. We'll have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. Sorry. Uh, it will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming he would not have let his house be broken into. So we must always be ready. Um, what does that look like, though, being ready for service? It means to be in relationship, fellowship, and communication with the Lord. It means to be repentant of sin, following Christ's footsteps as uh, in your everyday walk. So, and then Jesus says in verse 40, he says, You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. We must always be ready, because we just, we don't know. We don't know when the end is. We don't know when that final day is, when that trumpet call will sound, and the rapture is going to happen, and we're going to be taken home with Him. Um, and so at this point in the passage, Peter asks, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? Listen to Jesus' answer. In verse 42 through 48, he says, Who then is the faithful and wise manager, whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants, will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. 
And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Did you hear that? From everyone who is given much, much will be demanded. And from everyone who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. We have been given much. We have been entrusted with much. The blessings the Lord has given to us and the faith that he has bestowed to this youth group is incredible. But with those blessings and with that faith comes the great responsibility to share Christ with others. I challenge you as you're at home during this quarantine to be creative. Find ways to share what Christ has done for you, whether it's, you know, putting stuff on your windows for people to see as they as they walk by, you know, around, you know, on, as they're on walks on the neighborhood, or, or you know, chalk that you're putting on the on the sidewalks for people walking by, you know, just or videos that you make, or you know, anything that you can do to uh, share what Christ has done in your life and to give people that blessing, you know, that God bless you as. Uh, as a way in, you know, to, to just let them know that he does care. God does care for them. He cares for us. He cares for all of us. And he wants to know us intimately. Jesus never said it was going to be easy. In fact, it's just the opposite. Reading in verses 49 through 53, Jesus says, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Being a follower of Christ might mean that some people won't want to be friends with you. It might mean that they're going to be just downright hateful and mean to you. As God's creation, He's given us hearts of compassion, and, and so with that comes a desire to accept others and to be accepted by others. So when we're rejected, it hurts. It does. But to be rejected because of Christ means that you're actually living for Him. And that glorifies Him. Jesus continues on in verses 54 through 59. He says, When you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, It's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, It's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites! You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? Are you going with your adversary to, as you're going with your adversary to the magistrate, try hard to be reconciled on the way, or your adversary may drag you off to the judge, and the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. We know that no one knows when Christ is coming back. But I can guarantee you one thing. We're closer today than we were yesterday. So live for Him. Be ready for His return. Get your heart right. See the light. Be the light. Celebrate His resurrection. Happy Easter.